Today, we are going on a long, long journey. But it's not a journey on land or by sea. This journey takes place far above our heads in the sky, and it takes place every year at the same time. Can you think who might take this journey? Can you think where they might be travelling to? Here we are! Let's join the flock, getting ready to leave from the southeast of England. Look how many we are! Our cousins from all over the British Isles are here. Over the sea, separating England from Europe, the swallows fly the 22 mile journey over the English Channel. Bonjour, la France! <laughs> Wens, northwestern France. What do you see? I see a tall cathedral, Cathedral Saint Pierre. Excellent view and roosting position. I see a busy French marketplace too. But we must press on through France, over the fields and towns of Nantes and Bordeaux. On to the treacherous slopes of the Pyrenees we go. Wow, look at these mountains. We Up and over the highest peak we go. Pico Donito. At 3,404 metres, it's snow-capped. Pine forests at the foot of the mountain range provide perfect shelter for a few hours' rest. Now we venture further south across Spain flying and stopping for rest and food along the way. Then into Morocco. This is North Africa and the climate is getting warmer. 21 degrees in October. The houses are different here, built of limestone or concrete blocks, and there were different sights and smells too. Fez is famous for its tanneries. A tannery is the place where the skin or hide of cows is treated and turned into leather. Can you see the cow hides hanging on the buildings to dry? Can you think what leather is used for? But we can't stop here for long. We have to move on. Our journey hasn't finished yet, and we still have a long way to travel. From Fez, we need to cross the Sahara Desert. This desert covers 9 million square kilometres and has been shaped over time by the wind. This vast desert includes sand dunes, barren stone plateaus and salt flats. Some of the sand dunes reach over 152 metres high 
That's taller than the London Eye. Ahead of them lies a vast death trap. The Sahara is too large to go around. The swallows have no choice but to meet it head on. It will take one of nature's greatest feats of navigation to cross this lifeless wasteland. Sadly, this challenge is becoming tougher as the desert is gradually getting bigger due to climate change and overgrazing. Our path takes us across the desert regions of Algeria and Niger into Nigeria and we reach here gasping for food and water. Nigeria is the most populated country in Africa, but has long had problems of political corruption and a poor infrastructure. Nigeria is a patchwork of plains, swamps, mountains and steamy jungles. It has one of the largest river systems in the world, including the Niger Delta, the third largest delta on the earth. The southwestern plains are home to the Yoruba people, who have lived there for thousands of years. This is Olumoko Group. Action. Battling thirst and famine, we reach Bojibok at the foot of the Umbe Mountains. We're in good company because at least two million swallows have been making the trip here. Here, however, other dangers lurk. Locals hide in the grass and try to catch us in homemade traps so that they can eat us. So let's get out of here quick and continue our journey south, crossing the equator. Now we come to the deep dark equatorial forests of the Democratic Republic of Congo. This huge country has the second largest rainforest in the world and receives 2,000 millimetres of rainfall each year which sustains the massive expanse of lush jungle. Hidden under the ground there are also many precious minerals like diamonds, gold and silver waiting to be mined. There are very few roads here in the Congo, and transport is difficult, so we have the best way to cross the deep forests and wide rivers. Can you see the giant mountain gorillas, the pygmy hippopotamus, white winos, crocodiles, and deadly green mambas and pythons, which live in the rainforest? If the trees are cut down for firewood, building materials and making way for farming and houses, these animals won't survive. Sadly, the DR Congo has been gripped by civil war for many years between the government and rebel groups and it is still a very dangerous place to be today, so we can't stop and enjoy the greenery for long. We have had to travel around 6,000 miles and it has taken us four whole months, but we've arrived! South Africa is the southernmost country on the African continent. Pretoria, the capital city, is in the north of the country, but we go right to the toe of Africa, to the Cape of Good Hope. We're in the southern hemisphere now and the seasons are reversed. June to August is winter here, but we have arrived in December, at the height of summer, when the maximum temperatures average 26 degrees Celsius. There are plenty of insects to eat here, that's why we have come. But we need to watch out ourselves too, as bigger predatory birds like the African hobby and the peregrine falcon can swoop down and snatch us out of the sky. The Cape of Good Hope is sometimes called the Cape of Storms, since its rugged, wild landscape reaches down to the sea, where the Atlantic and Indian Oceans meet. Here, many ships have perished, as early explorers in the 18th century tried to navigate the Cape of Good Hope. 
Here is where the legendary ship, the Flying Dutchman, crewed by tormented and damned ghostly sailors, appears in bad weather, as it tries to beat its way through the waters, without ever succeeding in rounding the headland or arriving in port. Our journey is complete. We have made it. But this journey is a very hazardous time, and many of our companion swallows have died from starvation, exhaustion, predation, and in storms. It's remarkable that we can travel 6,000 miles just using the stars, sun, and magnetic field of the Earth to navigate our way across two continents, the same route each year. We can rest a while now, but not for too long. In March, we will make the long journey home, in time to make our nests ready for the baby swallows that will be born. The return journey will be much harder though. Travelling 300 kilometres per day, we will travel fast and furiously to return to exactly the same nesting site as before in the UK.